Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is the fifth video I've made on the DeVilbus Finishing Line FLG 670 spray gun. FLG 4 is the model. Um, now, the video is coming up to this. I've done a unboxing and I've done three review and demos. Uh, I've done one for each of the uh, different fluid uh, tips that come with this gun. This gun comes with a 1.3, 1.5 and 1.8 mil fluid tip. Um, easily exchanged for the different type of paint or uh, materials that you uh, want to spray through the gun. So the purpose of this video was to show you guys that it really is an all-rounder spray gun. Um, now, first up, you saw me spraying plastic primer on that plastic bumper bar there. Next up, I'm putting some non-sanding primer in it and I'm going over this tailgate. Just a medium wet coat over the tailgate. So you can obviously see that it can spray the primers, it can spray the plastic primers and I'll be putting some base coat on soon and also some clear coat on a couple of separate different jobs. Um, this gun, uh, I never really liked it originally when I was doing it with the, some of the thicker primers. Um, when I was trying to use the primer as uh, more of a filling capabilities, whereas something like this, it breezes through it because you have uh, maybe thinned down to a 20 to 30% ratio. So it's going to come out a lot nicer. Um, the spray fan is a touch smaller than what I'm used to with the Dwilbus GTI Pro Lite. So to compensate from that, you may notice that I'm holding the gun just a touch uh, further back to enable that fan to open up a little bit. I'll give you guys a quick run through the rest of the settings on the gun too. So I do like to usually uh, keep that fan wide open. Uh, have the fluid uh, most of the way out, just so it's in just a couple of turns. And uh, the pressure setting, it was about 12 PSI for my base coat. I think I came up a little bit closer to the 15 PSI for clear coat. Um, basically, if you get a little bit of orange peel on your base coat, it's not going to be the end of the world. However, you want that clear to be on nice and flat, so I like to get that pressure up a little bit higher. Don't forget, obviously, the um, relation that temperature has to pressures. So um, this day would have been uh, 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. Um, so if it was colder, if it was, say, 20 degrees, my pressure settings may even be up to around 20 for base coat and 25 for um, clear coat. So the paint that I'm using on this car, that was actually a Duke's own wet on wet primer I used to put down first. The base coat is Metalux and we've just put a touch of metallic in it. The, the car here that you see me painting the tailgate from, it was a full uh, respray, it was a white van. Um, the customer, their company colours are black so they wanted the entire van repaired and painted black so we ended up mixing a couple of these Metalux cans together for our base coat some that we had sitting on the rack put a touch of metallic in it and um, for clear coat we ended up using the DuPont 696 clear now some people may say hey you're not allowed to mix two different products like that together but in the real world it's absolutely fine now don't take this as in you can just go and mix any paints together, but paint is paint. If you're using stuff that's uh, solvent based and you're using the correct um, like two pack automotive clear, it will be pretty good over most base coats. I mean, they're not going to warrant it, uh, the paint suppliers won't warrant it, but it can be done. So um, it's just a way of saving a couple of dollars by using that base coat basically. Um, so, as you can see here, the clear coat's starting to go on quite well. I don't go on too heavy with my first coat of clear. Um, you know, just nice closed coat, so you can't see through to any of the base coat still. That's all you need. Give that five minutes, probably these days. By the time I get everything painted with a full booth like this, as you can see, there's a full spray booth. By the time I've gone around, got everything else done, maybe mix up a little bit more paint, you know, three or four minutes that's all you need i'm just using standard activator and it really does flash off nice and quick in these warmer months um if it's in the colder months i would obviously like to maybe walk out and forget about it for you know 10 or so minutes come back and put your next coat on like that use a fast hardener or some uh you know rapid reducer and stuff like that can always come in handy um now the hvlp uh is what this spray gun is which meaning high volume low pressure now, that basically means that the holes, either side of the air cap, which um, force the air out of the spray gun, they're quite large. So, 
it needs a high volume of air to pass through those bigger holes, but it operates at a lower pressure. It's, I guess the best way of explaining it is a little bit like uh, the hose at home. Everyone when they're a kid has put their finger over the end of the hose. Obviously the pressure is going to be coming up, but less uh, fluid is going to be coming out. So uh, high volume, lower pressure is the same as if you take your finger off. There's more coming out, but it's at a lower pressure. And that's exactly what's happening with these spray guns. So what uh, in theory, in practice, what that actually means for the painter is you're actually going to get more paint on. It's going to be more efficient and um, you do have to be a little bit careful of uh, getting paint runs and stuff like that um, because it can, uh, it is prone to put a lot of paint on there. Um, I find if you are refinishing more of the European type of cars, I would probably recommend using high volume low pressure to replicate that orange peel. If you're painting more sort of American, Australian, um, Japanese car, um, I would say conventional for American, Australian, Japanese, low volume, low pressure, because they're, uh, they're not all the same, but a lot of them are very uh, dry and they don't have much paint on them. Um, but yeah, and you, you've got in, in the middle, you've got Australian sort of American cars. They, they got quite an, I'd say they're actually some of the nicest finishes. Um, whereas, yeah, you've got very thick, chunky orange peel with the um, German and uh, you, most of the European cars. Um, reason being is that they use the low VOC high, and high solid clears with the UV uh, protection in it and um, it's a lot thicker and yeah you're better off refinishing with the high volume low pressure now this is after the second coat here you can see that's got a totally acceptable finish on it I mean there's a little bit more dust in that panel that I would usually like but all in all I'm pretty happy with it um, and the dust is no, no, no fault of the guns anyway it's either come off me it's um, come into the booth somehow or it's come off the floor and started circulating but um, yeah the purpose of the video is just to show you guys uh, how well this gun actually can perform I, I will make mention that the rest of this car was actually spray, sprayed with the GTI Pro not the Pro uh, not, not the FLG but we, I did the bumper bars and the tailgate with the FLG4 um, I just bought this gun off eBay for the sole purpose of reviewing because I know it's a fairly popular gun there at a reasonable price. I got mine for $170 US, um, exchange rate took it up to about 230 Australian dollars and then I think I paid another 30 or 40 dollars shipping so all up it, it cost me 270 to get to Australia. Um, it's quite a good gun, I would recommend to the DIY guy, even someone in the trade. Um, I, yeah, I would happily use this more often to be honest. Yeah, first up, I wasn't too impressed with it. Um, I was getting big build-ups of um, paint either side of it when I was using the thicker primers. However, you thin that paint down, which obviously base coat and clear coat is going to be a little bit thinner anyway, uh, which is why it definitely performs a little bit nicer. So um, this boot lid here, this is off a HJ Holden um, Monaro. A pretty popular Australian car, built uh, 1975, I'm pretty sure this was. Um, I have painted this boot the first time and I really wasn't happy with it. I've got quite a lot of dust in it. Um, just one of those things that happens in spray painting sometimes. So I ended up just, set, just deciding the best way to fix it would just be to sand the entire thing back down and put two more coats of clear over the whole thing. Well, two and a half. As you saw me, uh, the very first coat was just sort of a bit of a, a mid coat, um, just to give me a bit of grip and hopefully stop any sort of silicon or fish eyes that you may have coming through. I've noticed sometimes when I do flow coat, that kind of thing happens. Unfortunately, when I was going to put my second coat on, I put the, um, the camera onto the tripod over there in the corner. I'm sure I pressed the, the turn on button, however it didn't actually turn on. But um, you can see here that this gun is capable of like taking it to the next level as well. Even the owner of this car came in, he had a look at that boot lid and he was pretty amazed. He was pretty impressed with the, um, the finish he ended up getting. So this is um, after the full two and a half coats of clear and that's a really good gloss level and um, you'll be able to see the car when it's um, well not 100% finish off but where it, it is at the moment. I think I will end up making a few more videos on this car 
Um, it's got some uh, Monaro stripes down the side and it's uh, got the GTS uh, guards or the fenders on it which have the cutouts and they've got to be painted black as well. Um, as, you, as you see this car in a, in a minute here, it hasn't been polished yet. We need to go over, polish the entire thing, do those blackouts, um, paint the bumper bars for the guy. Hopefully we'll have it finished off in the next couple of weeks for him and um, we'll make a few more videos for you guys too. I just thought I'd make a quick mention, anyone who's in the Perth area, feel, uh, feel free to um, check out my business. I'll be putting a link in the description of each one of my videos from now on to my business's uh, website and Facebook page. Uh, we are Spray Tech Refinishing, we're located in Bayswater in Perth. Uh, pretty central location, um, so you know you can get this kind of. We like to do this kind of restoration work a little bit more than the smash work. We're two spray painters, so uh, we try to uh, focus more on the spray painting side of things and panel beating and stuff like that. However, we we do know what we're doing with um, just a lot of more minor repairs. Any sort of heavy smash, we try to stick away from it. So there you go. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.